Have you ever owned something and then got the newest version of it years down the road only to find that it totally sucks compared to the one you had way back when? Today, I am going to tell you the top five reasons why I will never own a Wrangler JL. Jeep has been an icon all the way back since the World War II flat fenders dominated the battlefields up until the Jeep brand kind of met its peak right in the TJLJ era. They basically dominated off-road and then they made a change. Guys, before we get started, if you could just do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button down below and only take you a second. Helps the channel out tremendously. Thank you in advance. Back in 2007, Jeep went mainstream. It wasn't just because they wanted to either. All of the heavy regulations from the government to get better gas mileage and cleaner admissions kind of dictated the direction that all manufacturers had to go with their next generations of vehicles. I'm sure Jeep didn't hate the huge success of the four-door Jeep. Yes, at that time, the JK and the JKU was the new Jeep. As soccer moms all over Southern California flocked to the dealers for their new Jeeps, us Jeep enthusiasts found that their motors and their transmissions weren't exactly what they used to be. Not to mention the nanny sensors that they started to introduce into these things to get them to pass an actual smog check really was kind of opening the door to failure whether it be on a trail, in altitude, and dust, or whatever. And it just wasn't the same Jeep as it used to be. But the space increase was amazing. And in 2011, I actually took one of those four-doors and created the perfect Southwest Overlander. There were a few mechanical issues that I kind of worked through along the way, but all in all, it was still a great Jeep. And then we got introduced to the JL, the JLU, and finally the JT. Uh, it seemed like, though, as Jeep kind of raced to bring their vehicles up to the market standard in technology and in comfort, it actually kind of turned me in the opposite direction. That's why I'm going to give you the top five reasons why I will never own a Jeep Wrangler JL. Number five, newer vehicles have a lot of luxury. They're very plush. They got all the amenities and all the cool gadgets. That is actually takes me away from the driving experience that I get when I'm out in the middle of nowhere with nobody around, just me and nature. I don't want a, an airplane cockpit that I'm dealing with while I'm out on the trail. I don't want the creature comforts of so much luxury when I'm trying to really get in contact as close to I can with mother nature while I'm out there. Number four, for whatever reason, the Jeep JL simply was not built for gorillas like me. I feel like it's such a confined space being behind the wheel of one of those Jeeps that everything is tighter. And when I'm out there, even if I am driving something luxurious, I want room, I want space. I don't wanna be like I'm wedged in the uh, driver's seat of an Indy car trying to hit the trails and enjoy nature. Number three. The Jeep Wrangler JL is simply too expensive. It's not that it's so expensive for a vehicle these days. It's that you do not, in my opinion, get the bang for the buck. They raise the price because they have this strategy of catering to like a luxury clientele, but they do not give you the reliability and the uh, higher end finishes of a luxury vehicle. It's almost like the worst of both worlds instead of the best of both worlds. The number two reason why I will never own a JL is because all of the electronics and all of the nanny sensors. I want primitive. I want, I love the simplicity of knowing that I'm in a Jeep that if something goes wrong in the trail, there's a great chance that I can figure out a trail fix for it and make my way back to the highway. I love the simplicity of not having all the stuff that's gonna potentially fail when I'm trying to put in hundreds and hundreds of miles way away from civilization. And the number one reason why I will never buy a Jeep Wrangler JL there are way too many quirky mechanical failures in it. Everybody that I know that gets a Jeep JL has issues. It's like these things are built to break. 
There's all kinds of little things that go wrong that you have to go back to the dealer for. And if you don't have some crazy good warranty, they will just nickel and dime you to death. And there's zero reason why I should buy a $70,000 vehicle and have to worry about it breaking the first time I take it out on the trail. Now that all said, I'm a guy who has a 2004 Jeep Wrangler TJ that I absolutely love. I'll never sell it. And come May, I take the doors off, I take the top off, and I don't put them back on probably until we're somewhere into October. So I really love that open feel, old school, nostalgic Jeep. At this point in my life, I don't even see me getting a new vehicle at all, let alone a new Jeep. Uh, if I were to go out and say, okay, I'm gonna buy a new vehicle today, I probably would get like a late 90s model uh, Land Rover Defender or something like that. Although they, those Grenadiers do look kind of cool. Um, I am going to stick with the older stuff just because it's more my style. And again, I love the simplicity and I love the lack of electronics and I love the lack of nanny sensors. And I love uh, the, the better build quality that the older vehicles have versus the new ones. But that is simply my opinion. Guys, if you could do me a favor and tell me that I'm either right or wrong and tell me why in the comments down below, I'd greatly appreciate your input. And guys, don't forget to click on this cool video of these awesome lights that are the best lights that I've had to date in the off-road industry. I am Rob from XOAPO. Keep adventure alive. <laughs>